Tonight on Connecticut's news station, the entire state in the process of thawing out. A day of snow and ice left roads a mess and officials are still trying to clear them out. We'll check on conditions and just how many crashes were caused by the ice. And Mother Nature not going to help melt any of that snow and ice. The cold continues to sink in. We'll take a look at the numbers coming up. Day three of the Michelle Traconis case, and we're hearing from the Dulos family's longtime nanny, who shares memories of Jennifer Dulos during testimony. Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And we begin tonight on the weather. Roads are still dangerous across the state after a round of uh, winter precip this afternoon. Cold temperatures also complicating matters, and it's going to be a while before the ice melts away. Thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 10. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. Schools across the state are announcing delays already. Some are even canceling classes altogether. Dozens of crashes uh, have been reported today on everything from small county roads to highways. Crews have been keeping up with salt, but the concern to Tonight is threats like black ice and people just not driving safe. Yeah, Connecticut's news station has team coverage tonight. Our own Jake Garcia is in Weathersfield and we'll hear from him in just a moment on the conditions outside. But we begin with Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank. Uh, Rach, the snow's over, but it's going to be a while before the roads are cleared, right? Yeah, absolutely. The snow is over, the sleet, the freezing rain. We had all of those things across our state today, but temperatures are going to be plunging into the teens tonight. So the concern is that we're not really going to be able to clear up any of that mess unless we continue to see the crews out overnight and temperatures tomorrow will stay below freezing. So I mentioned before Mother Nature really not going to help. So lingering icy travel into the morning tomorrow. We're already seeing the school delays, some closures and plan on a slower commute and check in with the Fox 61 morning show crew on your way out the door. 19 degrees right now in Waterbury, a sign of what's ahead. I think we all drop back into the teens. The winds are picking up too. We've got gusts about 20 to 25 miles per hour. That's making it feel like the single digits in Waterbury, like 15 in Hartford. And as we head towards daybreak, we're looking at overnight lows that'll be between about 10 and 15 degrees. Here's a look at those low temperatures. 17 in Willimantic, 19 in New Haven. The good news is we will see a lot of sunshine, so that will help us out a little bit, but it's going to take some time to thaw. High temperatures tomorrow do stay below the freezing point with highs in the upper 20s and we could even see a stray snow shower during the day on Thursday with another chance for a period of snow to finish off the work week. We'll take a closer look at that. Your full forecast coming up. Thank you, Rachel. With temperatures dropping by the hour, there are increased concerns about icy roads out there. Fox 61's Jake Garcia is live in Rocky Hill with how people across the state are preparing for those slick conditions after a day of a wintry mix. Jake. Well, Sarah, out here along the Weathersfield Rocky Hill town line, the roads are clear, but they're still wet from our winter weather. And as uh, the night continues, the concern now turns to those potential icy conditions across the state. As the snow began to let up Tuesday, people all across the state began clearing the snow once again. And shoveling it, shoveling has been mostly just pushing everything to the side very little. The ice has been a little hard to work with. As you could see, there's patches of ice that you have to work on. But the work wasn't done as homeowners prepared for the potential icy conditions. That's a special railing we put in for, for my wife. The guy who put it in said, can't use salt. So I used cat litter. He told me to use cat litter on this one and it works effectively. The timing of this winter storm posed a challenge for road crews. It was falling during that morning commute, continued through the evening commute. Uh, so just a lot of extra volume on the roadway, which means that our crews to do their routes takes them a little bit longer. Drivers out and about Tuesday evening said for the most part, road conditions were good. Slippery. Uh, it's been cool for the most part, though. The roads out here, a lot better than other areas in the, you know, in the towns in the city. But as the night goes on, black ice is a concern for cities and towns and for the State Department of Transportation. Remember, with these temperatures dropping, you know, that wet spot on the road, it may look like it's just damp. Just go ahead and, you know, consider that that's ice. You know, just think that it's going to be ice, you know, slow down, make sure that they're giving themselves lots of time, uh, some extra time to get to their destination. Officials are urging people to stay home, but if you do have to travel overnight, be extra cautious.
Well, officials also want to remind people to uh, take that extra time on the roads for tomorrow morning's commute. And of course, our weather watch team will be keeping you informed and alert all morning long to get you where you need to be safely. Live in Rocky Hill, Jay Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All good advice, Jake. Thank you. Well, the impact from this storm is still being felt as we have hundreds of delays and closings and cancellations coming into Connecticut's news station this evening. Make sure you check the full list scrolling at the bottom of your screen and anytime on the free Fox 61 news app. Well, new tonight, one person is in the hospital after a nasty crash involving a box truck. It happened in Reading this morning. Firefighters posted these photos on Facebook where you can see the truck skidded off the snowy road and hit a tree along Churchill Road. The driver had to be cut out of the cab of the truck and was rushed to the hospital. There's no word on that driver's condition tonight. A lot of crashes across the state because of the weather. And get this, a tractor trailer carrying bananas rolled over in Stonington on I-95 northbound around 6.30 this morning. State police say there were possible injuries here, but they haven't released details on those. Part of Route 5 in East Windsor was closed for some time today because of a propane tanker crash. This happened in the area of Abbey and Stoughton Roads. The area was also evacuated while crews were on scene. It's unknown if there are any injuries. Well, the trial against Michelle Traconis resumed today after the break for the holiday weekend. Testimony inside the courtroom took a new approach. The defense analyzing more evidence from uh, from Jennifer Farber Dulos' home in New Canaan, along with a new witness who many would argue saw more than anyone inside the Dulos home. Fox 61's Julie LeBlanc has more from day three of the trial. Most of the day today was spent hearing from a retired Connecticut State Police detective who walked us through the evidence he says he found in Jennifer Dulos's New Canaan home after she was reported missing. But in the last 45 minutes, we heard from the Dulos family's longtime nanny. Now, Lauren Almeida says she started working for the Dulos family in September of 2012. At first, it was part time, but quickly she became the full time nanny for the Dulos children, all five of them. Soon she would see the dynamics between Fotis and Jennifer. At first, she says they seemed to get along just fine. She did notice, however, that Fotis, a business owner, was not home most of the time. But she says she tried not to judge and initially saw him as a kind man. And when it came to Jennifer, she says she had a close relationship with her kids. They always wanted to be next to mommy. It was just kind of what it was. And she would sing to them and laugh at them. And she never raised her voice. Almeida continued working for the Dulos family for years. In fact, she actually still does. And soon she started to notice a different dynamic between Fotis and Jennifer, one where she says Fotis was harsh with Jennifer, who didn't like conflict. Then she saw things take a turn. The big dynamic change was in March of 2017, which is when Jennifer found out about his affair. Now, Almeida finished her testimony tonight talking about a trip to Miami where she says she first met Michelle Traconis. Now, that is the first time we have heard in this trial so far a witness, one of the state's witnesses, mentioned the defendant's name herself. And it's also the last thing we heard for the day as the jury was sent home. Of course, the trial picks back up tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We are in Stamford, Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Julia, thank you. Our coverage from the courtroom will continue until a verdict is reached. Stay with Connecticut's news station for much more in the trial of Michelle Traconis. You can follow along online on social media and streaming anytime on Fox 61 Plus for Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Well, new attend police in Guilford say there is no threat to public safety after they investigated a tip that a high school student was threatening to kill his peers. Officers say they got the tip Thursday night that a student had made what police are calling a quote kill list. They went to that teen's house and found no threat, but another tip came in the next day, prompting officers to investigate further. Police are positive that the student has no means to harm anyone and they are now getting help from the school. Weathersfield police have released the name of the teenager killed in a crash involving a stolen vehicle this past weekend. Three juveniles were in the vehicle that was driving out of control. It hit a tree and then a home on Church Street. This happened Sunday. One teen ran off from that crash and two others had to be cut out of the car. Police say 14-year-old Novell Newsmith of Hartford died at the hospital. 
Officials are still investigating the crash.